Hey guys, it's Jamie from Rubicon Models here and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted up my Stuart. We're going to be using some really simple techniques, nice and easy, aimed at beginners to turn this into this. Now we've had a few requests for more beginner based tutorials that use fewer products and also only use Vallejo products as well as staying away from white spirit based stuff like oils and enamels so therefore this video it only uses Vallejo products and it only uses water as the only solvent in here there's no harmful chemicals involved some of the weathering techniques we look at later on don't require an airbrush but you will require canned varnish if you're going to be emulating them because varnish needs to be sprayed onto the miniature rather than applied by hand so I've started off I've applied Vallejo grey primer to the miniature it's available in a can but I did use my airbrush and we're going to be using the Vallejo Armoured Fighting Vehicle Painting System for UK bronze green tanks. So I started off with camouflage black green and applying it to all the lower areas and panels and anywhere two pieces meet. I also do the same to the turret as what I do to the hull. Even if I do not show it or mention it in this video, sometimes it's not worth showing things twice if it's basic. Now there's no reason if you want to do this more advanced you couldn't just copy the green colours from this and refer back to the Russian painting tutorial because I would weather it the same way. So here you can see where I've applied that dark colour and we're going to move on to the second colour which is the main colour. It is Vallejo Model Air Bronze Green and we're going to apply this to anywhere where there's grey primer. And you're already going to see a nice transition start to appear between the camouflage black green and the bronze green. Now we're not going to be doing any enamel wash in this so I'm really relying on the camouflage black green to outline areas that I want to keep interest on, that I want to keep shaded. So just take your time, be nice and careful. It's possible to do this painting method by hand using the full colours because they are thick enough to be applied by brush. try and get your coats nice and thin and get good coverage it's better to have a thin coat than a heavy coat now we're going to start the highlighting process using Vallejo Model Air first highlight now I don't know if this is available separately because if it was it would be an unusual name for a paint but I did again buy the Armored Fighting Vehicle paint system I'll put a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out now you can really start seeing those transitions and those areas of interest. This colour also creates a sun bleached, weathered look, rain, etc. It's taken its toll on the original colour of the tank and lightened it some. I use this on the centre of panels to create interest, the tops of panels on the sides, them sort of areas. One thing I did forget to do was paint the rear of the lights. You can see that really noticeably here, but I came back and did it later. So yeah, just remember the tank you're working with is 3D, so there's areas like that you have to hit. Sometimes I forget that and have to come back later on. Modulation, some people argue it's not the most realistic effect, but to me it's an effect that really pops on the tabletop and I'm a war gamer, so I like it a lot. Here you can see using just those three colours, we've got some nice transitions, some nice blends. They were made possible by the airbrush to an extent, but if you thin your paints, you can achieve it with a brush, or if you dry brush even. Now the final highlight is Vallejo Model Air Light Green. I'm going to be using this really on the highest areas just to pop them, tops of panels, etc. If you mess up, just use your finger to wipe away the paint like I did there. Nothing that you do is irreversible when it comes to model painting it's supposed to be fun so just take your time chill out if a mistake happens just work on fixing it concentrate on what you're going to do rather than what you have done it's something I've had to tell myself many times when I'm painting but it is the case it is true had a few questions about what airbrush I use I use an Iwata high performance B I also use a Badger Patriot for priming and varnishing. The next step is really simple, it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. We are going to be applying some chipping using a piece of sponge and some German grey. 
dip the sponge in the German grey and wipe most of it off on a piece of paper. That's why my work area is covered in paper because I'm pretty lazy. And just start dabbing along the edges where you want to create irregular chips. How many chips you do is completely up to you. In my head this field goal hasn't actually saw much combat but it has driven through some bushes and trees that might scratch the paintwork eventually and there have been ghosts crawling on it. It's a wrecked vehicle, it's not supposed to be fighting on the front line for any length of time, which is why I'm keeping chips to a minimum. Again, how many you do is up to you. Your weathering tells a story, so think about what you want your vehicle to be doing. Now we're going to be moving on to brush painting. For this I'm going to be using the Vallejo model colour German grey, and I'm going to be using it on the machine guns, um, any other metal areas such as tools, it's going to be a good base coat. I don't like to necessarily use 100% true metallics when I'm painting in this scale, so I often use German grey as a base coat for metallics. Wooden areas, such as the tools at the back, get a coat of chocolate brown. These were sometimes overpainted with the same colour as the vehicle. So you could leave them if you wanted to, but I like the contrast that having that extra colour creates. Thanks to the Rubicon method of casting, these tools are really pronounced, really easy to paint. Even though they were cast onto the miniature, it's no problem to paint them the details there, you don't have to paint it in yourself. Now the chocolate brown areas, I highlighted them straight away using Vallejo model colour beige brown. I kept the chocolate brown where the wood meets anything else, so for example the top of the axe, that area there, there'd be a little chocolate brown line to shade it. And also where the clamps are, there's a little chocolate brown line either side, just to shade it, create some contrast, keep it interesting, make it pop. Now two colours is all you need. Next we're going to be dry brushing gold metal grey from Vallejo on all the metallic areas. The dry brush guys, all you do is get the paint on a rougher looking brush, I call them veteran brushes, and just wipe it off onto a piece of tissue so that there's hardly any paint on there and drag it on the top. Because there's hardly any paint, it's only going to catch the topmost surfaces, so it's going to act as a really easy way to highlight. So this is one of the techniques you could use for the armour if you don't want to use an airbrush. Don't underestimate the power of decals to turn a basic paint job into something that looks really good on the tabletop. Take advantage of the decal sheets included. In this case, I'm going to be using a star, a bridging weight, two regimental icons, two divisional icons two squadron geometric shapes either side and a star on top as well as a tank name and a tank department number. Decals can turn a boring paint job into something that has interest and catches people's eyes. Use some water to move it about where you want and once you're happy let's just fix it with some decal fix now. I use Vallejo decal softener through my airbrush. You could apply it by hand but I'm pretty lazy and what that does is it almost melts the decal so that it sits on the paint better so that you can't see the hard edges of the decal as much. I really like working with our decal sheets especially because there's so much variation that no two tanks ever have to look the same and you can represent a variety of different units. Once the decal softener has dried I hit it with a satin varnish that was included in the armoured fighting vehicle painting system from Vallejo. I use it for the airbrush. You could also use canned satin varnish. You could do this stage by hand if you really wanted to but you're going to need some sort of airbrush or canned um, varnish later on when we're doing the pigment wash because hand varnish wouldn't work. Now I use four different shades of pigment for the pigment wash. Natural sienna, natural umbar, burnt umbar and heavy ochre. I use a multiple of shades because it creates a multiple of different colours later on in different tones. What you do is you just mix them with some water until you have the consistency of a wash like this. You see how the paint just doesn't keep still, it slides around, it's not offering any resistance to the brush, it's flowing really nice. You can use almost any pigment for this, you don't have to use Vallejo. The only ones I, I don't think you could really use are the Tamiya ones because they have a binder in them. And the reason we're not using pigment fixer or a binder is because you can actually take pigment off with water and a dry brush. Once it's dried, it's not permanent until you seal it. So you can use it like an enamel wash in that way. There are some negatives, however, to this method over the enamel wash. 
Firstly, water takes a lot longer to dry than white spirit, and you have to wait for it to be 100% dry before you're assured of the effect. So there's a lot of waiting around to see if you're happy. If you varnish it before it's fully dry, and then it's still drying out, you, you might end up with an effect that you didn't want. So that's something to think about. And secondly, when you're sitting an enamel wash with your varnish, the enamel has dried and bonded to the miniature as long as you haven't left any white spirit on it, which means that it's going to stay. Whereas pigment wash, some of it is going to go off due to the air. You can't use hand varnish because the hand varnish itself will move it around. So what you have to do when you're taking off the pigment wash is think, okay, I'm going to lose some of the pigment. So you have to stop just before you're happy with it. You don't want to stop when you're happy with it because you're going to lose some of it. So you have to try and think ahead. Here, I've just showed you I've done it all over the vehicle. I've not been particularly neat. Pigment washes are great for beginners because they're a real easy step and you can achieve a multitude of different effects with them. So here I've waited for it to be mostly dry. And the way I would explain it is this. You can use a dry brush to move the pigment, to remove it, and to create streaking effects. You really need to have this in hand to see how it works. Different pressure applied with the brush will change the effects. So here I'm pressing quite heavily to remove it. But when I want streaks, I just go quite lightly across the top. Now you can use water to remove it. You put some water on, grab a towel, grab a piece of tissue and just wipe it off. But water is best used to move the pigment into the recesses. You can use a dry brush for that, but sometimes water is quicker and easier. But then also water, also you have the problem of having to wait for it to dry again. How much pigment you leave on the mixture is up to you. I've saw some examples of where people have painted wrecks really simply by spraying them green with a spray can and then just covering them with a pigment wash and then leaving them like that because the, the dust and the dirt would settle on a broken down vehicle that isn't moving or being maintained. You can use rust as well, you can do different pigment colours, you can use verdigris, um, rust, mud, sand, brick, clay, um, Vallejo, ammo, Broken Toad, MIG Productions, they all produce great pigments. So all I'm doing here, it's the longest part of the tutorials, I'm just showing you how I move it around. Uh, it was quite a long process. This painting tutorial is one of my shorter ones, but it was actually one of my longest to produce. So what you could do quite easily though is do multiple tanks at the same time. By the time you've done the, f the last one, you can come back to the first one. It's one of the things that I, it's quite hard to explain verbally as well, which is why I wanted to show you it in detail so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. It seems to be the easiest way to explain this technique to people. A lot of people can't believe how easy it is. And I myself have actually painted quite a few armies up using just a aerosol can and a pigment wash, especially in the days before I used to airbrush and try out new weathering techniques. It was my go-to technique to get force painted on the table and it's really accessible and easy to do that. Here I'm just showing you the effect. This is just before I'm happy with it. This is just too much pigment, only slightly, but I know I'm gonna lose some, so it's just slightly too much. I've tried to keep it in the recesses on the bowl cartridge cutter on the front. I figured that would get really dirty and muddy. So now all we're gonna do is use the satin varnish and we're gonna apply it through an airbrush or through a can. Again, I can't stress if you did it by hand now, you would just move the pigment and ruin the effect you've got. The pigment would bind to the model as well in an area that you necessarily don't want it. Now with satin varnish, I find that the further away you spray it from the model, the more matte it is. So I want it quite matte, so I'm holding it quite a distance away from the model. But here, I want some satin varnish on the lights and I want it to be quite glass. When I apply it by hand, it's usually more shiny. I'm doing that to create a glass effect. And that's it, that's how easy it was to paint up this Stuart. It's a couple of simple weathering techniques, a few simple paints and highlights, taking advantage of the great decal sheet, and we're done. You could easily do a few of these guys. So thanks for taking the time to watch this. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and please check out the Rubicon Models Community Facebook group. Thanks for your time. See you next time.